Now we've got, there's only two machines that can do full um, changes of pressure via a pump, like this machine can, um, and we'll only be talking about one of those today. <laughs> um, but we, we boast um, replication of consistency via that system. So we've got a patent system called the control delivery system that uses flow rates uh, and the importance of flow rates to actually uh, extract the coffee and we can sort of go through and show you a few different things relevant to that system, okay? Um, so, quick overview with the Opera. A machine that's been designed uh, so we don't dictate to you, you use the machine exactly how you want to. So we've got different extraction systems in there, volumetric, mathematical equations, and also now the full brew ratio calculation. Uh, we've got the ability to set up six different flavour profiles per group head, so we can start using that manipulation that you're going to start learning today, uh, and actually implement it on a machine like this, not just once, but six times on one group head. All right, so we can actually manipulate one coffee six different times or 12 times across a two group, or we can have 12 different coffees all running at their own specific flavor profile. All right, so uh, we've got a machine that can do a lot more than what your standard machine can do. It's like the difference between an old push button phone and going to a smartphone, all right? You just, the world opens up. Uh, and that's what we're here to touch on today is how to get the best out of that, all right? So, um, Talking about the new scale system, which is something that we've been working on now um, for a couple of years to get it absolutely perfect. Again, when we're screaming that we're releasing a machine for consistency with ease of replication, we needed to make sure that it's one of, if not the most consistent scale system on the market. So, everybody's probably seen these before in the market, the uh, Archaea Luna scales. Um, we've actually done a deal with Akea, uh, and they're actually building our scales for us, but in the interim uh, we're able to actually hook up the lunar scales and have them communicate to the machine via Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So we're now looking for a, a weight output and not worrying about uh, the water, the flow rate, anything like that, just what ends up in the cup. And we manipulate the flavour via the, the different pressures. Okay, so I'm going to go through and do an extraction. Okay, so all we need to do is have our cups underneath ready to go. Now on the lunar scales, uh, there is an option that they can self-tear, uh, but we've taken that away from the scale and actually put it into the machine. So when we actually activate the machine, it'll self-tear. So after two seconds of activation, the 0.9 will self-tear to be double zero, and it'll start actually projecting it up here on the screen. All right, now what it's actually doing is recognizing the flow of the water through the actual puck, and it's reading that to determine when to shut the system off so that we get uh, as close to uh, the set point as possible. Now the set point on this machine is set for 35 grams, Okay, so it's recognised that flow and it stops now 1.9. Uh, so it's recognised that the actual flow has changed to the last shot that I did. So if I go ahead and do another shot, it'll recognise that flow and it'll stop things closer to the set point. Now you'll notice here three and a half bar for three seconds, that's our pre-infusion that's set. A ramp to the nine bar, and it's running through its extraction at nine bar now. And you'll notice on the last few mils of the shot, or the last couple of grams of the shot, it'll actually go back uh, to be a soft post-infusion as well. And that's that three stage of infusion that we're talking about. Now, this is completely settable via, oh, the tablet's not here, uh, via an app. Okay, so it's recognizing it stopped it slightly earlier this time. So what it's going to do, it must have been a set point 36, I'll check that. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's recognizing the flow of the water through a patent system called a control delivery system and stopping according to the flow of water, okay? 
Um, so we can boast now that with this system, we can run consistently with uh, a lot of coffee during the course of the day and make sure that we've got a consistent product being, uh, being given every single time. Now, um, if, we weren't, if we wanted to run a different profile, we don't actually have to do any changes whatsoever. All we have to know is what button's programmed for what profile. Okay, so that time I actually pulled the lever towards me under a 60%. So I'm going to go just up one button and activate. And what you'll notice here is the pre-infusion will still be the same, but now we've only got six and a half bar pressure. <clears throat> All right, so we can start experimenting without actually changing any of that activation. So let's say you've got no one in your shop. We're doing some experimentation. We're trying some new things, what works with different coffees. Uh, and then when the client comes back in the shop, we know that that button's already set up for the actual coffee you want to give your customer. All right, so you don't need to take anything away, um, away from the machine itself. Is that right? So it's a 96 set point, uh, 36 set Okay. <coughs> now what we also have the ability to do is via this system, this one's set up, uh, so I've got the scale system set up on group one, but on group two I've left it as a volumetric system. Okay. So we have the ability to change those different systems. And what you'll notice on system two, I won't even use the scales just to, is under the same extraction, we haven't actually got pre-infusion. It's straight to the six, six and a half bar now. So we can have dual systems set up within the one machine and run completely different styles of coffee at a completely different flavor profile. All right, so this is what we wanted to talk about in depth is these different extractions and what difference does that make to your coffee. Also, what does the pre-infusion and the post-infusion do to your coffee, okay? So, um, we could taste these two coffees side by side and they would be chalk and cheese, okay? The flavour would be completely different. You would have a completely different TDS reading in the first to the second uh, and also the flavour profile would uh, be completely different. You might find one's balanced ones, um, you might find uh, an acidity that is starting to be more prominent. Uh, it might not be anything close to where you want to be. But with a machine like this, with those three different infusions, you can manipulate it to be perfectly what you intended. Okay? You don't just have to be happy with what you've got. All right? So, what do the different... Has anyone ever heard of the breakdowns of different pre and post infusions, things like that, and what they make? Has anyone been using them ever? No? Okay, um, so by using a pre-infusion, you are, has everybody used uh, alternative brew methods or done pour overs, aero presses, things like that? More so the pour over we're talking about here. Yep. Okay, so with a pour over or a V60, um, once you start doing your pour over, you do a balloon process, right? So you pour a small amount of water into the pour over to allow the balloon process to actually occur before you start your extraction. This is what we're actually doing on the espresso machine by giving a soft pre-infusion. We're injecting a small amount of water in at softer pressure to allow that biscuit to swell to uh, allow for a more uniformed extraction. All right, so um, it's going to give you a better extraction, number one, but it will change the flavour of the coffee as well. So you might find that it's starting to bring a sweetness to your coffee that you hadn't tasted before. You might find that blueberries, for example, are more prominent in, in the flavour profile than ever, ever before, okay? And then with the post-infusion, the post-infusion, uh, in, in turn, if we've got uh, a coffee puck like this, for example, we can see that there's retention of water in that puck. Now, if I use nine bar pressure all the way to the end, those drips are gonna end up in your cup, okay? Or that water that's retained in this puck. So by dropping the pressure off at the end of the shot, we're trying to eliminate uh, a lot of this retention as well, or we're trying to stop a lot of that ending up in your cup. 
So again, you get a, a lot cleaner, uh, a lot cleaner cup of coffee when you, you add in a post infusion. All right. So we can start using those and balance them out uh, to be an advantage for us as a barista. Okay. When it comes to the infusions. We've been doing a lot of exper experimentation in regards to what that actually changes. All right, so we know that it changes flavor, but how does it change flavor? Why, at a lower pressure, are we still getting uh, a decent cup of coffee but with a completely different, um, a completely different pressure? Mm -hmm. Now, what we found is, is by lowering the pressure of um, a system like this, and we're not talking necessarily rotary pumps because I haven't done uh, the testing there, but with gear pumps and the way that they work, by putting the pump pressure to three and a half bar, for example, rather than a nine bar, you increase your TDS by about 1%, okay, as an extra, as a yield, all right? So if you've got a coffee that you're, you might be happy with the flavor, but you want to increase yield, you can reduce pressure on a machine like this and get the exact product that you want. Now we did, I've got some test results here, excuse me. These are just um, some quick results we did um, just recently. And we found that uh, not only does lowering the temperature under extraction change the difference to your TDS, but so does the pre-infusion. Okay? Uh, and by having a pre-infusion, you're obviously allowing for a, um, an easier passage of water. So believe it or not, by having a pre-infusion, you actually decrease your TDS, all right? Um, but if we have a look here along the bottom line at a 93 degree, um, it makes quite a big difference. Now, everything is the same. We've got 20 grams into a 35 gram output. Just by changing from three and a half bar to six bar to nine bar, which we've got set here so you control it yourself, we're jumping from 11.35 to 10.87 to 10.06 with all parameters the same. The grind setting, the dosage, the, the amount of water, everything is the same, only pump pressure has changed. Okay, so uh, if you're using, number one, a three group machine with a single rotary pump, this is what's happening to your coffees if you're starting to use all three group heads at once. Okay, you're getting inconsistent pressures at your group heads, so this will start happening. You will start changing your, your extraction yields according to what's going on at the machine. On a machine like this that uses individual gear pumps, you can now use this to your advantage. All right, and you can say, all right, under group one, that person wanted a stronger coffee. What do we all do as baristas? We add an extra shot, all right? Now this, how do we know, if, if you ask me for example for a stronger coffee, how do I know as the brister that you don't want higher caffeine content? Or is it stronger flavour? You know, we just don't know that. So by doing extraction this way, by increasing slightly the TDS, you can increase the strength in flavour, but not necessarily the caffeine. Okay, you'll still get a slight increase, but not like throwing in an extra shot. Okay, so we can increase flavor via this system as well. All right, also with the pre and post infusions, you can also uh, start playing around with those as well to increase or decrease your TDS. As I said, by putting in pre infusion, you'll decrease. Now that's one step. We can also do temperatures and actually manipulate the temperature to increase or decrease your TDS as well. So we don't need to actually touch anything relevant to the grinder. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do a three and a half bar uh, infusion. And you'll see that the quality itself of the coffee doesn't fault. It just completely changes what's in the coffee. Okay, so now activating, it's going to run through that three and a half for three seconds, but now it's going to be a four bar extraction throughout the whole shot. Okay, we can notice straight away that the, the actual flow of the coffee has slowed down, and this is due to the delivery of uh, the water through those gear pumps. And we'll go through the difference in flow rates uh, relative to those pressures in a second. Okay, so even, even with the, uh, the four bar pressure, if we were to look 
we wouldn't say that that's actually been done at any different to a standard extraction. No so that's <laughs> No, it'd actually be stronger. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, stronger and the what's stronger, in stronger in flavour. Okay. So, and why this is? Slower. Slower water extraction. So, as the water's passing through that, if we, if we look over here, these are the different flow rates between the different bar pressures that I've got set here. Okay. So, at a four bar pressure, we've got a delivery of 215 mils in 30 seconds. At 6 bar, it jumps up to 240 mils in 30 seconds, and at 9 bar, a delivery of 290 mils in 30 seconds. So, even though that doesn't look much, when it's actually given resistance and flowing through a coffee, that's uh, a lot, um, or quite a significant difference, alright? So, by doing a 4 bar extraction, the actual coffee, the water delivery has slowed down, meaning it's got more time to grab onto essence of coffee. All right. As Roger was saying, that you need, you've got the minerals within that water, and that's what's actually extracting your coffee. All right. If you will have distilled or demineralized water, it would almost flow straight through without doing anything. Okay. By slowing down the water, you're giving more time for those minerals to grab hold of the essence of the coffee to end up in your cup. Okay. So you're increasing the yield or the essence of the coffee in the cup. All right. So um, if I was to now. Go ahead and do the same extraction at the nine bar. Alright, the actual coffee uh, appearance will be absolutely no different. And I'll give you one, Roger, because you're the only one that tastes one. <laughs> Alright, so the actual quality of the coffee has not changed at all. <clears throat> Many. Okay. Uh, and again, different coffees will work differently at different pressures. Uh, but you'll find if you've got uh, an earthy coffee, for example, uh, that you want to accentuate the certain nuttiness, the hazelnuts and things like that through the coffee, a pre-infusion and a low pressure will work perfect with a coffee for that, like that, for example. It'll actually bring out that nuttiness in the coffee. If it's a sweeter coffee, you might need to up the pressure just slightly, but let's say six and a half bar, okay? Yeah, and for example, I've got a customer that I just installed one of these last month, was it in Queensland? About six weeks ago. About six weeks ago in Queensland. Every extraction he's doing now is at four bar. All right, so... He was using uh, a standard machine, an industry standard machine up there, um, and as soon as he changed over, he understood that he could actually manipulate that flavour via pressure, not by doing anything with the grind or the roast even. Um, so, again, it just opens, opens up a different world to the barista to actually allow them to start doing things that they weren't able to do in the past. So right. I've, got, I've got a million question for you. Yeah. I'm um, not being a barista, but if um, a roaster turns up with a um, an unusually substandard blend, yep. for whatever reason might be, <coughs> you can manipulate it through the group head so that you actually get more to what you want. your customers prefer. Correct. Than what is being delivered. By That's you. right. So even to the point uh, we had this circumstance happen. Uh, we actually had a roaster at a show who was, let's say, sceptical and he wanted to actually trip us up. And it just happened to be that we had the majority of the build team there. Um, <laughs> so bring it on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he brought us over a coffee and his statement was, this is our hardest coffee to work with. No barista gets this right the first day. Okay. So within the second pour. We got it spot on to the point we took it over to their roaster and they identified flavours in that coffee they had never tasted before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the second yeah. pour. 
All right, so, uh, and it's obviously we know as the manufacturers or as the designers, we know certain things on this machine, uh, how to set up the machine very quickly, for example. So we had an advantage there, but we also understand from all the testing we did what manipulation makes what difference in the cup. So we were able to taste that first coffee and instantly know how to manipulate it to get the best flavors out of it, Ooh. right? So once you start learning this system, it's like going from uh, an old, you know, Volvo from the, from the 80s and going to a new Commodore, for example. It's so just that complete like different... the dials that you need to make the perfect water that you want. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, and, and this is the thing too, is when it comes to, and it's quite relevant to the water as well, uh, is when I was talking about those variables and keeping things as consistent as possible, it, what matters is this, right? And making sure that this is as consistent as physically possible, right? And we've all heard people in this industry talking about the God shot, okay? Mm -hmm. And the God shot being that one shot that you get perfect but never replicate, okay? This is the money shot. Right, this is... <laughs> so that's where this machine, where we've designed it so that you can find your God shot and we can replicate it. All right, and the only way to do that is replicate that God shot is making sure that every single variable is from A to Z before you start. Mm -hmm. This included, water needs to be perfect, machine needs to be perfect, the temperature needs to be perfect. So us as the manufacturer do all this work to make sure that this fluctuation here, as you can see, is very little. We make sure that the water side of it, the pressure side of it, is incredibly stable to make sure that if you find your god shot, you can then replicate it. Alright? Fire a machine like this, and I can guarantee it. I can put any of my children's lives on it. Uh, you know, I am 100% certain to stand by this and state that you can extract the best flavoured coffee out of this machine and replicate it with ease. Well, that's speaking on experience and Ben's been and I've been out with Ben on certain jobs and uh, uh, it's been incredible what we've had to work with and the different types of coffees in the end you get there. And the, the big comments made about this machine and you might you've worked with the machine so you may be able to stand by that um, the biggest comment that sticks out in my mind about this machine isn't that it's made the best coffee on earth okay I don't stand there and I say that what I will say is that any other machine, when it faults, the coffee is terrible. When this machine, when the coffee faults, it's still a sellable product. Right? And we, we did a tasting, uh, I don't want to say another manufacturer, but we did a tasting on another manufacturer's machine, and it was done by a champion uh, barista who actually tasted the coffee, and it wasn't that one, <laughs> uh, who actually tasted the coffee, and he identified the difference in flavour and actually went, well, no, that's, that's the flavour it's supposed to be, but I preferred the off shot. Okay, so even though it was the faulty shot, it was the one I preferred. But you can't get back to it if... That's right, he couldn't... He, if he wanted to re-replicate that bad shot, right, he could never do it. Okay, because it was a fault. Mm -hmm. Where via this machine, you can replicate it. Even if it was slightly off, you know what's happened via here because it's giving you all that information, mm -hmm. right? Even to the point, if you have a look at the volumetric system, which is what these guys are using, if I activate this number starting to count down, all right? This is the control delivery system. And what this means is, let's say we're, we're doing a shot. I'll um, just quickly do some resistance here. Okay, so if we have a look at the gauge here, um, you can see that six and a half bar coming through as well. But you also notice this number start to slow down. Now this is simulating a, a shot of delivery or a, an extraction, okay? What we can do here is micromanage the shot. Let's say a blonding occurs. We can look at this and go, okay, at six mil, 
my coffee started to blonde out. So I can go into my tablet system. I can go into my tablet system. I can go into the doses and under group two, right? We can see that 64 number under this extraction, 64 mils. Okay, so what I can actually do is go into that extraction, the 64 mils, I know that my coffee was blonding out when there was still six mils up on the screen. So I need to knock six mils off this number. So I can actually go in and change it to 58. All right, enter that in, write the machine, and I'm 100% certain now that my coffee won't blonde out or over extract. All right, so you can now start doing micromanagement of your shot to make sure 100% What's in that cup is intended, all right? And it's, it's too many times, I personally, I do it myself, I walk past and I see that San Diego's on the machine today, I'm having a coffee. But if Mark's on the machine, fucking forget it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just the way humans are, okay? They're creatures of habit and that means what they're drinking as well. From now on, what you'll see is if you walk past and see an opera on the bench, you know 100% that the coffee you got yesterday, doesn't matter who's behind it, you're going to get today. All right? And it's a major thing. There's only two major things that this industry is built on or uh, that a success within this in industry is built on, and that's mm -hmm. perception and consistency. All right? If you don't follow one of those two things, you will never be successful in this industry. We've gone consistency, other manufacturers have gone persist, uh, perception. Uh, so for us to scream consistency, that's what matters. All right? And to do that, we've added in all these little bits and pieces and you know, probably, let's be honest, gone over the top. But again, we didn't want to dictate to the barista how you operate it. If you want all these variables and use 12 different profiles and manipulate all these different pressures, because via this machine, or yeah, this machine, a uh, two group, you can actually manipulate 1200 different flavors across two groups, okay? So is that ever gonna be used? Maybe not, but maybe you were never able to find one of those flavor profiles on another machine before. This one, you found it, all right? So, and it makes a major difference. If that means that that's the difference between you making coffee better than the guy next door, right? So not the machine, not the barista, what you know what ends up in the cup is the the big important one and unfortunately you as the barista and the machine have to work twice as hard to make sure that happens with a machine like this it helps you to replicate all right so any questions on the pressures side of things anyone been experimenting with different pressures of extraction no not yet not, not yet. yet not yet <laughs> <laughs> all right so i've got a machine coming an offer coming <laughs> so he will be manipulating will be. <laughs> all right uh now also there it's gone so in depth with this now that uh universities are actually getting on board there's um there's thesis being written up right now uh about extractions at lower pressure and whether we actually call them espresso Okay, because espresso states that espressos are done at nine bar pressure. So they're saying, well, if you're doing four, it's not an espresso. Four filter, filter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's all these things that are now it's implicated. Not quick enough. It's not quick enough. But if we back up a few years and we look at a leather style machine, okay, has anyone here used a leather style machine? No, it's unfortunate. Because you have? Yeah, okay. You do not know what making coffee is until you've used a leather style machine and you actually feel like you're making coffee. When you're operating a machine like this, you, you're still operating, but when you use a leather style, it's, it's really making coffee. Okay, but I don't want to get into that. What I, what I brought it up for it's was... It's important to people understand. It is, yes. And this is the reason why we put this lever on top too, by the way, is not so that you could pull it off the bench with it. Um, the idea behind it was, is button pressing is very impersonal. 
So by putting a lever on it, it becomes almost sensual. You become yeah. one with the machine. Sensual, right? Did you say sensual? Sensual, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't even say that until the first time I used the machine. And the first time I did, saw the machine, I was just hoping no one had a black light around. I didn't tell you. Yeah. Right? So the reason why I bring up the lever style machine is what people don't understand is a lever style machine, the first espresso machines that made coffee, actually had different pressures behind the coffee during the extraction. Right? So what happens when you first pull the piston down is you have lines pressure actually wetting so you're actually when you hold the coffee down you've released the piston and you've allowed water to flood the chamber now that water has no pressure behind it so it's doing what this is doing that three and a half bar or lines uh -huh. pressure actually wetting the puck once you release the handle there's about 13 bar pressure because you've got a, com a fully compressed spring that's sitting on top of the the puck forcing that water down now as that spring starts to release it's also releasing the tension. So the pressure is releasing. All the way till the last section of the shot where the spring's completely released and it's back to no pressure again. So what you have is infusion, uh, pre-infusion, infusion, post-infusion. Post and this is what everyone says, the best coffee I've ever had comes off a leather star machine. Oh, but I'll never use three stage infusions. <laughs> right, so <laughs> it's an understanding of it is what people don't understand is that that was the way that coffee was made at the start of time, right? But that, that is manual drive, this is automatic time. It doesn't matter, it's replicating the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, but it's done all in one level. Yes, so but it's, it's theoretically, <laughs> yes, theoretically, yes, but because of the way the system <laughs> works, it, it can replicate that it's same constant. profile. Yeah, yeah. It's changed that came completely constant, this yeah. one. I'm turning, like changing gears and changing gears. The difference between <laughs> this and a lever is you're not stuck with three and a half bar thirteen. Or you, nine. Can, or you can change the spring, you know. You can you change the spring yeah. tension, right? <laughs> so um, <laughs> and, and then you can have different spring tensions, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you can replicate the same product as what came off that old lever lever style machine, but mm. using uh, a new style technology to get gain that advantage, basically. Mm -hmm. All right. So that makes sense to you. Yep. 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 All right. So I know that you've started on the beer. I don't usually like people starting on beers before the tastings. So feel free if you don't want to taste coffees, you don't have to. Okay. I understand that you're not going to be able to taste much if you are drinking beer. <laughs> Just drink. <laughs> So really this coffee's bitter. It's surprising, man. Or, if you want to be, this coffee is awesome. Shit, that's the dregs. That's the god shot, man. Has anyone ever hit their god shot? Sorry? I said, has anyone ever hit their god shot? Oh, it's... Oh, I have. Nope. You are, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Sorry. No, it, it's it's an interesting concept because uh, after I've, I've spoken to a lot of baristas about chasing the god shot, and uh, a lot of them will say that they have, but then they'll they'll get one and later on in life they actually realise that they haven't. How do you know? How do you know? Yeah. This is the thing: is how do you know you've hit your god shot? Mm -hmm. 